Hello and welcome to the channel. I have two of these lovely Atari PC3 motherboards and I wanted to make a small contribution to the December event. Did Atari make PCs? Indeed, in 1987 they released the PC, later renamed PC-1. It was housed in the same case as the Mega ST and didn't have much in the way of expandability. The PC-2 and the PC-3 were XT machines with a lot of 8-bit ISA slots in addition to the built-in functions like mouse interface, floppy disk controller, video hardware and a real-time clock. Let's take a look at the motherboards themselves. The model number is C103272. I have both revisions, revision with no designation and revision B. They're almost identical. We'll take a look at the differences later. On the rear we have 25-pin serial and parallel ports. We have a video port and an Atari ST style external floppy connector. And on the right hand side of the PC we have an XT keyboard connector and an Atari ST mouse connector. On the front left we have 512K of RAM, CPU and a socket for an 8087. This revision of the board has an AMD CPU and the revision B has one manufactured by Intel. There's also a BIOS, a DMA, timer, RTC and Atari's own glue. On the top there's connectors for LEDs and the PC speaker. On the front left side of the motherboard we have the graphics chip, graphics RAM, keyboard connector and mouse connector. In the rear we can see the floppy controller, UART, ports, ISA slots and the power connector. The power connector is not a PC standard connector, instead it's a Molex SPOX. S -P -O -X. First, I check all the rails for shorts against ground. Now I try to find the power rails starting from the known locations on the ISA slots. And here are the results. It's the same layout as the P8-P9 connectors on the PC. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong connector. So, 3D printing to the rescue. The 3D printed body seems to fit. And so does the crimped connections. Sort of. For the ATX side I had the wrong contacts and uh, I had to improvise. Okay, so I had to wire up this gruesome contraption. It's a PCB mounted ATX power connector. First, so three, let's connect these four, wires and see what happens. Minus five volts. The white one. Plus twelve. It's 
space and then power grid. Look at that. And now connect the power supply. CPU clock should be this, this pin here. Yes, it's ticking. Very conveniently, it's located right here. It's low. This is the switch for the monitor settings. The manual states that on is in the up direction, but I think it's uh, mm, not entirely correct. This is how it's set for CGA. Now I flip the switch and we should see some video text. Yes, it's alive! There is no keyboard connected, so we get a 301 keyboard error. Memory seems fine. That is a bit unexpected. No keyboard, no F1. Trying with a five and a quarter inch floppy. No luck here. High density floppies won't work on this machine, but we'll give it a try anyway. This is the only fresh media I have. And no. This drive seems to be working, but um, as you can see, the monitor isn't very healthy anymore. The drive is working, but the media is not. At this point, I've given up on trying to boot into DOS. The board seems to work, and uh, I don't have a PC3 case for it, so I think it's uh, time to quit. I have the original media, and uh, decided to take a look at the surface. This is not how a floppy surface should look like. The first track is pretty warm, and the dark spots are mold, and the white specks are dust. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Wow.